Greetings, motherfuckers. My name is Sam, and today I'm here on a different microphone in a different room to usual, not the booth, and I think we all know why too. But today I'm just gonna, you know, chill out and take it easy. Maybe catch a few bugs, go to a museum, go swimming, become a slave in order to pay off my debt. Yep, that's right, today we're talking about Animal Crossing, the most high-octane game series of all time. It's like Doom on roids. But what Animal Crossing villagers are secretly seriously shady? What happens if you watch TV at 3.33am in Animal Crossing? And did we ever get to the bottom of who let the dogs out? Because that's, that must have been two decades ago, right? Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so round up your favourite villagers and let's have a party with some nookie. Just not that kind of nookie, you absolute cad. As we go through 101 facts about Animal Crossing. Number one. Animal Crossing is an open-ended social simulation game series originally created by Katsuya Egochi and developed by Nintendo in 2001. In these games, you play as a human who moves to live in a new village inhabited by a number of anthropomorphic animals. Said player is encouraged to buy a house, pay off your mortgage, and become the mayor of the town. You know, just like in real life. I have done 0% of those three things in real life. Number 2. There are a total of 8 games, including 3 spin-offs, as well as 4 mobile apps. The main games are Animal Crossing, Wild World, City Folk, New Leaf, and New Horizons, and said spin-offs are Happy Home Designer, Amiibo Festival, and Pocket Camp. The latest instalment was released on the 20th of March 2020. Hmm, I wonder why we've decided to make this video now. Number 3. While there's no specific objective to the games, players are encouraged to perform a number of activities throughout the village. These include things like fishing, collecting items, socialising with your fellow residents, and fossil hunting and slaying demons who have invaded Earth from her- Oh no, that's the other game. Doom! Doom. <laughs> Number 4. One of the most notable features of the games is the way they use time. All Animal Crossing games are played in real time, which means that time passes in the game world as it would in reality. This allows for time tasks like waiting for a tree to grow, or, I don't know, decapitating a zombie. Oh, again, that's the other game. Oh, that's the fire extinguisher. <laughs> Number 5. The main character you play as is completely customizable and is human by the way, not an animal or indeed a crossing. The player picks the name and gender of their character as well as choosing and modifying various aspects of their appearance through clothing, accessories or in some games, your hairstyle. Number 6. One of the main goals of the games is to increase the size of your house and acquire the nicest possible furniture to fill it. It can be customised in lots of different ways like the colour of the roof, the furniture, what music is playing and different wallpapers and flooring. Number 7. Your house is then judged by the Happy Room Academy, or HRA, and they give you points depending on how super cute your house is looking. You can then spend these points on more cute things for your cute house. Cute. <laughs> Number 8. Another primary function of the game is collecting. Basically, you collect things like fruit from the trees, seashells, and various other bits of garbage you find scattered around the world. You can then sell these things for bells, the in-game currency, which you can then use to either get better tools for specialised jobs or alter the appearance of your character or house. I wonder how valuable my Funko Pop collection would be in Animal Crossing. Number 9. And hey look, don't worry if you're lonely in real life, you can't be in Animal Crossing. Your fellow villagers are always there for you. You can talk to them, send them letters, barter with them for more stuff, and even play hide and seek. I played that with my dad once and I still haven't found him. It's been 20 years. Number 10. As well as chatting with your various animal pals, you can talk to your real life friends too. Each village can inhabit up to four real human players and you can talk to each other through messages left at the post office or bulletin board. In the days of the GameCube version, you'd have to trade memory cards to play together, but nowadays with this fancy newfangled technology, you can connect with Wi-Fi. Oh, Wi-Fi. Sorry, my bad. You kids and your crazy tech. Number 11. Do -do 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 there are eight character types, Jock, Cranky, Lazy, Normal, Peppy, Smug, Snooty, and Uchi, which means home in Japanese. Number 12. The original Animal Crossing was released on the 14th of April 2001 on Nintendo 64 and later re-released on Nintendo's GameCube in December of 2001. This is all in Japan, by the way. It was then released in 2002 in North America, 2003 in Australia, and 2004 in Europe. Number 13. Originally though, the game was called Dobotsu no Mori, which translates from Japanese to Animal Forest. That's also the name of a 2006 anime film adaptation of the games, but I'm skipping ahead. I'll come back to that later. Number 14. During the transition from Japanese to American, not only were thousands of lines of dialogue translated, but the translation team also had to create new holidays and objects that would be relatable to Western audiences outside of Japan. This resulted in the game having far more text than its Japanese counterpart, and us gamers love reading, right guys? Number 15. 
Nintendo Japan were so impressed with the team that they ended up adding all this extra content back into the Japanese version and re-releasing it as Animal Forest E Plus in June of 2003, selling over 91,000 copies in its first week. Damn. Number 16. Some of the other additions to Animal Forest E Plus included new characters, town decorations, new fish and new insects, a health status that could be influenced by medicines, and a live birthday performance from the one and only doggy rock god KK Slider. Number 17. Speaking of Slider, actually, here are some stats from the doggy himself. In the original Animal Crossing, he plays 55 songs, he plays 70 in Wild World, 75 in City Folk, and 91 in New Leaf. The guy has a crazy repertoire. Number 18. He also makes a cameo in Super Smash Bros. Melee as a trophy and can appear on the side of the stage too, when really he should be in the centre, shredding his brains out like the buckethead dog he is. Number 19. One last thing about KK, he shares his birthday with fellow villager Nana. It's August 23rd, by the way. Number 20. There's a fish introduced in the first Animal Crossing called the Coelacanth. This fish is extremely rare, it needs to be raining or snowing to catch it, and once you do, it's worth 15,000 bells. Heck, in Dobotsi no Mori E+, you could only ever encounter them once per play session. Number 21. If you want your character in the first Animal Crossing to resemble a creepy gyroid, there's a trick you can do to make like Picard and make it so. Drop all your items and take a trip on the train, reset the console and choose no when prompted and your character's face will be erased. You're... welcome? Number 22, who? Anyway, are you ready for some gameception? Because while you're playing Animal Crossing, you can play games within the game. Players can collect up to 15 different Nintendo games which were playable through emulation. These include Balloon Fight, Donkey Kong, and Wario's Woods. Number 23. In North America, you could also get Ice Climber and Mario Brothers through e-reader cards. The Legend of Zelda also exists within the game's code, however it's not accessible in-game. Strange. Number 24. Upon its release, Animal Crossing was met with critical acclaim. People loved it. IGN gave it an outstanding 9.1 rating and it received an 87% on Metacritic and 86% on Game Rankings. It also ranks at number 10 on Nintendo's best-selling franchise list, having sold a total of more than 32.9 million units across all games and consoles. That's a lot of gosh darn nugs, babe. Number 25. The second major title release for the franchise was Animal Crossing Wild World, released on Nintendo DS in late 2005 and Wii U in 2015 or 16, depending on which bit of Earth you live on. Number 26. It was the first game in which you could visit friends online using Nintendo Wi-Fi and through DS to DS connection. The Wi-Fi function was shut down in 2014, so if you're still playing on the retro console, you can only play with your other cool DS friends. Number 27. Wild World also introduced new characters Celeste, Brewster and Harriet, as well as 15 other brand new characters. 72 villagers were added since the last Animal Crossing game, however many made their debut in the Japanese original game expansion Animal Forest E+. Number 28. As well as the new characters, there were a number of extra additions such as the new tools like Slingshot and Watering Can, new holidays in Yay Day and Lardy Day, although Halloween and Toy Day were removed, increased character customization with the ability to change hats, facial accessories, hairstyle and umbrella, new insects and fish, and monkey villagers. Though the monkey villagers have not been available since the closing down of Nintendo Wi-Fi and Nintendo Zones, for some reason. Number 29. Wild World is the ninth best-selling game on the Nintendo DS, with 11.75 million copies sold worldwide as of March 31st, 2016. Anyone who said Animal Crossing isn't popular is talking DS. Like BS, but it's D, and that's the co- doesn't matter. Number 30. Elements from Wild World are featured in the 2008 crossover fighting game Super Smash Bros. Brawl for the Wii, such as the stage based on a village from the game named Smashville, which is a place I thought was exclusive to the chat-up lines I use, but there we are. Number 31. Different events occur at particular times of the year too, such as holidays and the variation of collectible fauna depending on the month or season, just like in real life. Honestly, me and my rabbit neighbour love the realism here. Number 32. In 2006, one year after Wild World was released, Toho Studios released an anime film based on the game series. The basic premise involves an 11-year-old girl named Ai, or A, maybe, moving to the animal village during the summer, so pretty similar to the games, really. She then makes friends with her fellow villagers and works in preparation for the upcoming winter festival that's teased by some messages in bottles that she believes may or may not have been left by aliens. Wow, this is wild. Number 33. The movie was only released in Japan, and Nintendo of America have no plans to release an English version, so yay. Number 34. Joji Shimura was attached to direct, having previously worked on manga to film adaptations like Shin and Yo Onshi and Master Keaton, and Tamagotchi the movie? Ta 
That's not real. Is that real? It is real. Wow. Number 35. Some of the Animal Crossing series staff assisted with production and worked to give the movie the same wide audience appeal as the video games themselves. Number 36. Those who pre-ordered tickets for the movie were eligible to receive vouchers which could be redeemed for hard to obtain gold tools in Wild World. There's a joke there about hard to obtain tools that I'm gonna leave. Number 37. The 16th of December 2006 was when it was released theatrically in Japan, earning over $2 million. By the end of 2006, the movie had a total revenue of $12 million, becoming the 30th highest grossing film that year in that region. Number 38. The film had lifetime earnings of approximately $16 million by the end of its theatrical run in 2007, making it the 17th highest grossing film of that year. Number 39. Back to games now, with the third installment of the series, in Animal Crossing City Folk, or Animal Forest Let's Go to Town if you're from Japan, or Animal Forest Let's Visit the Town if you're from South Korea, or Animal Crossing Let's Go to the City if you're from Europe. God, this game has more names than Saul Goodman. It was released in November or December of 2008, depending on which country you were in, and was only available on the Nintendo Wii. Number 40. In this game, players can decide whether or not they want to start afresh, or move in their Nintendo DS character from Wild World. If you choose to move in as your old character, you'll move over all your catalogue of stuff and you'll have the same appearance. Number 41. However, you can't take any bells with you or any house upgrades because that would be cheating. And if you're playing using the illegal game storage device, then the moving function won't work. Just don't break the law, guys, come on. The meaning of life. What with this being a Wii game and everything, you can do some manual labour too. Hooray! Using the Wiimote, you can use axes, watering cans, slingshots, and nets. In the game, not real life. I mean, you can try using it as an axe in real life, it'll just take ages. Number 43. The reception to this game wasn't as strong as the others, mainly because it was deemed not different enough from other entries. However, it did sell over 3.38 million copies worldwide, so people weren't too animal crossing. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. Even for me, I mean, <laughs> wow. Number 44. And then came along a new Nintendo console, the 3DS, and with it a new Animal Crossing game, New Leaf, the fourth main title, released in 2012 for Japan or 2013 for the rest of the world. Uh... Number 45. The game was produced by Katsuya Iguchi and is directed by the two-person team of Iseo Moro and Aya Kugoku, who had both worked under the previous director of Animal Crossing City Folk on the Wii. Number 46. The game debuted in Japan with sales of over 800,000 units sold, with 200,000 of them being digital downloads. Yeah, in case you haven't realised it by now, people like Animal Crossing in Japan. Number 47. Animal Crossing New Leaf became the first 3DS game in Japan to pass 2 million units sold, doing so in just under two months. By December 2019, all versions combined had worldwide sales of 12.45 million copies, making it one of the best-selling 3DS games ever. Number 48. New Leaf has the ability to share dream versions of your villages, which can be accessed by the players all over the world. One of these, known as Ica Village, is basically a creepypasta, a horror experience. It's creepy as hell for Animal Crossing, and got quite a following of people trying to decipher just what the hell it all means. Number 49. New Leaf was Isabel's debut to the world. The internet seems to absolutely worship Isabel. Hell, the script here even has her written as Queen Isabel. She's now one of the most prominent characters in Animal Crossing and is a de facto mascot. Number 50. This popularity meant that Isabel was going places, yo. She's had appearances outside of the Animal Crossing games too, including a playable role in the crossover fighting game Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Number 51. Let's not forget she can also somehow drive, apparently, as she appears in Mario Kart 8, able to drive and throw things and everything. Number 52. By the way, in case you were wondering, Isabel is a right shih tzu. She's a shih tzu dog. That's what she is. Number 53. Isabel's name changes depending on countries though, like I do. In Panama, for example, I'm known as Derek. Anyway, her Japanese name is Shizu, which sort of means quiet branch. It also sounds a bit like Shih Tzu, doesn't it? Ain't that fun? Number 54. In Spanish, she's called Caneo, which means cinnamon, but is also a symbol of wisdom and good help. You can also say can to mean dog in Spanish too, which is what Isabel is. Number 55. Her Korean name is Yule, which means rapids or shallows. No idea why. Number 56. Anyway, Isabel is such an absolute hashtag icon that she was the face and voice of Animal Crossing's Twitter account. That's right, she was the company's online mascot, that is, until somebody else came along. That rascal, Tom Nook. Number 57. Yes, Tom Nook, the raccoon slash dog guy who greets you in every game at the very beginning. 
You also buy your house from him in New Leaf, but it's too expensive, so to pay off your debt you become an indentured slave for him in his store. Which is a tutorial, but still, capitalism yo. Number 58. Anyway, old Nookie here upgrades your home every time you pay off a bit of mortgage, which is nice of him, but he's charging you for it and plunges you further into debt. The house starts out at 18,400 bells, and by the end it's 798,000. With expansions, it's 1,410,800 bells. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Capitalism, yo. Number 59. So all this, I guess, begs the question, is Tom Nook a villain? IGN and Games Radar have him listed in the top 100 video game villains, some stating he's a kingpin or a pimp. Others, though, have said he's a mentor, but what do you think? Do you think our pal Tom is as devious as they say? Or are you on the side of him just being a simple landlord? Why not let us know in the comments down below. Number 60. Old Tommy has also made several appearances in the Super Smash Bros. games too. In Melee and Brawl, he appears as a collectible as well as being a background character on the Smashville stage, which, as we said earlier, is based on the Animal Crossing stage. Oh yeah, like the Beatles, it's all coming together. Another appearance in Brawl is his music shop, where you can buy loads of merch with his face on. Number 61. Nook isn't that bad a guy though, apparently he donates 90% of his earnings to an orphanage located three towns over, which leads to a wing being named after him there. But then again, he could be lying, the scumbag. Number 62. He also shares the same birthday as Hamlet, the hamster, not the Shakespeare one. It's May the 30th if you want to get him a gift, which he'll then probably in debt you for. Number 63. Captain is another character that appears frequently in the Animal Crossing world, and he's an interesting guy. Some have even accused him of being a bit predatory and creepy if you're a female character, given he smells your hair and asks if you're dating anyone while in the middle of the sea where you can't escape. Yep, seemed like red flag so far. Nintendo 64. In Animal Forest E+, some people question you on the real identity of Gracie, the sassy giraffe. The real answer is apparently Nabenasuki, which apparently roughly translates to saucy babe, although Google says it means hot pot. Number 65. Speaking of Gracie, the character is one of two, the other being Sahara, who had their gender censored or changed when the game was adapted for other countries. In fact, in Japanese versions of the games, Gracie's an effeminate male. Number 66. There's also a villager called Ganon in New Leaf who looks a little bit like Pig Ganon from the original Legend of Zelda, Adventures of Link and Link to the Past. But his birthday is the 21st of February, which is coincidentally the same date that the original Legend of Zelda was released in Japan. Number 67. There's also a lupine guy called Wolf Link that has lots of references to Zelda too. He's called Wolf Link for a start. Oh god! Whoa. Oh, Whoa. What? what? His RV has a Triforce on it and he has lots of Zelda themed outfits. Number 68. On Halloween, between 6pm and 1am, a gentleman named Jack will appear who has a pumpkin for a head. He gives you spooky furniture and can even play tricks on you like a right annoying little div. His name is alleged to be a reference to both Jack O'Lanterns and Jack Skellington. Number 69. Tom Nookie. The chameleon gnat actually spits out one of Animal Crossing's more cultural references. He says, hunt bugs in the fields, hunt bugs in the hills, hunt bugs in the streets, you must never surrender. Which is actually paraphrasing to Winston Churchill. Yeah, but you didn't expect that from Animal Crossing, did you? Number 70. Weirdly, Samson the Mouse also has a leader quote assigned to them too, specifically, Squeak softly and carry a big stick, which is a reference to Theodore Roosevelt's Speak softly and carry a big stick. I wish my stick was bigger. Oh, I forgot we were recording. Number 71. There's also a villager named Diana who is named after another famous Diana, and no, not the People's Princess. In fact, I'm not even sure she goes near a tunnel, but instead the goddess Diana. Her house is styled after a bathhouse, mirroring a popular Roman legend about a hunter spotting Diana in the bath. Number 72. In New Leaf, due to their amphibious nature, frogs do not carry umbrellas when it's raining and make unique comments about how they enjoy the rain makes their skin slick. Ugh, that makes me shudder just to even think about that's really horrible. Number 73. There's also a character called Blanca, who will almost always be referred to as a strange or suspicious looking cat. There's a theory that she could be a literal copycat based on a Japanese legend called Aonapera Bow, which roughly translates to faceless ghost. In her case, she copies the forms of her other villagers. Creepy, creepy purse. Number 74. Without sounding too much like the horrendous 2019 movie Cats, Katrina is a fortune-telling panther, not a cat, 
whose tent contains a lot of references to fellow Nintendo franchise The Legend of Zelda. God, they love it, don't they? These include pots that look like the water jugs from The Wind Wakers and a Triforce emblem at the back of her tent. Wow, that's like a cult there. Number 79. Luna is the only Tapir character in Animal Crossing. In Japanese culture, Tapirs are said to eat dreams, hence her working in the Dream Suite. What's also cool though is her name. Luna is the Spanish and Italian word for moon, her Japanese name means dreaming, her German name contains the word serenade, her Spanish name Alacama is a play on Alacama, which means go to bed, and her Italian name Sonia is a play on the Italian word sonno, which means sleepy. Well, that's one dreamy lady. Number 76. Let's talk for a minute about Bunny Day. Ever since City Folk on Easter Sunday, a chap called Zippity Bunny hosts an Easter egg hunt outside the town hall, in which 30 Easter eggs are hidden all over town. You can get egg furniture here too, which sounds smelly, and is the only day of the year that players can get them. Number 77. Something similar happens on April Fool's Day. Those dang tricksters in the village will attempt to play tricks on you, with varying degrees of success. These range from Tom Nook selling bikinis to even rumours of alien life forms being found. One of those is far more terrifying than the other, and I'm not going to say which. Number 78. Animal Crossing also celebrates your birthday too. Ah, oh, like they would if I had real friends. In the original and wild world, a random villager greets you and you get a cake from your mum you can't eat for some reason. Number 79. In City Folk though, things go up a notch. Your mum gives you 5,000 bells and you get an edible cake. Oh hell yeah. Number 80. It's New Leaf where things get up another level though. Yeah, get ready, because you get a party, baby. Your village best friend greets you and gives you a cake, and party poppers are set off and everything, celebrating the fact you're one year closer to the grave. Number 81. Animal Crossing New Leaf has a nice little easter egg that references the first Animal Crossing 2. On the train there's a cat called Rover, who seems to also be on the train from the beginning of the first one. In fact, he even says he hasn't done this much travelling since 2002 or so. Man, that's weird. That's what he says. That's not- I mean, it is weird that you haven't gone on a train since 2002. Anyway. Number 82. Similarly, if you buy a pink dresser in what seems to be a great deal, you get a GameCube and a row of GameCube games too, in a nice little throwback to the previous platform. Number 83. There is also a butt load, yep, I said it, but, of Nintendo-themed items you can buy in the game too, like Link's tunic from Legend of Zelda, Peach's parasol from the Mario games, and there's even a Wii Fit board. Remember Wii Fit? Ah, oh, what a time. Number 84. There's a character called Mr. Rossetti who chastises you for turning off your console without saving. He actually shouts at you for doing so. Do you get the pun there, by the way? Mr. Reset-y? Uh -huh. Number 85. In fact, if you do it enough, he'll threaten to completely reset your game, and on-screen animations even come up saying that he's doing exactly that. He later says he's joking, but kids, the lesson's important. Save your game. Number 86. Anyway, some think he's a little bit scary. In fact, he was made optional in the game New Leaf because he was so scary beforehand. Specifically, terrifying little girls, apparently. The game's creators even allege that Mr. Rossetti even made some of them cry, which, I mean, come on. Really? Really? Number 87. Anyway, the new game, which is out now, we'll talk about that in a bit, don't worry, came out for the Nintendo Switch. This game, though, has an autosave function which kind of takes away Mr. Rossetti's job. Soz Rossetti. Number 88. New Leaf is hiding some pretty creepy stuff, scarier than Rossetti. For example, if you watch the in-game TV at 3.33am real time, the static will be interrupted by an alien with red eyes garbling noises at you before disappearing completely. Okay, that doesn't sound that scary in theory, but in Animal Crossing? Number 89. At one point in New Leaf, Gulliver the Seagull mentions somewhere called The Over There. This is a slightly haunting reference to Paper Mario, as The Over There is the place where people go when they die in that universe. I thought it would be a shredder, but oh well. Number 90. In the game Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, an idle animation shows DK playing some 3DS. If you listen very carefully, you can hear one of the games he's playing is Animal Crossing New Leaf, as you can hear its music. Number 91. Like all modern games or media or even some people, Jeremy Renner, Animal Crossing got a free-to-play mobile version called Pocket Camp for iOS and Android devices. Honestly, I'm surprised I don't have one at this point. Number 92. Stop me if you've heard this one before, but the game gives you something called a microtransaction? Never heard of it. Anyway, you could pay real money for leaf tickets, which would then allow you to do certain things faster without waiting. Number 93. 
But it seems like the app did one of its jobs well, marketing that is, because a week after the release of Pocket Camp, New Leaf saw a 214% sale increase in Japan, so go Pocket Camp. Number 94. In March 2020, an Animal Crossing speedrunner, apparently they exist, with the username BrianMP16, became the first ever player to earn 1 billion bells through legitimate means. Once he achieved the billion bell mark, he was able to afford the most expensive item in the game, a post office model that contains 999,999,999 bells. To do this, he played the GameCube version of the original Animal Crossing for over 170 hours. That's almost as much time as I've spent on The Witcher 3, or, you know. Number 95. As we said way back at the start of this video, there's a brand new Animal Crossing out in the world in the form of New Horizons. Ooh. It was released on the 20th of March 2020 for Nintendo Switch. Unlike other games in the series, New Horizons will begin with the player living on a deserted island as part of the Nook Incorporated getaway package. This package apparently includes airfare, accommodations, labour tax, and a shiny new Nook phone. God. Number 96. Similarly to New Leaf in New Horizon, the player is able to choose an island layout and whether they want to live on the northern or southern hemisphere when creating their island at the beginning of the game. The hemisphere that you pick will alter the seasons in-game to reflect what they'd be in the real world. Your island will also feature a town plaza, an airport, a dock, and a secret beach. Number 97. When you first get to your new island, there's basically nothing there. There's an airport and Tom Nook and a couple of others in one tent. That's basically it. Number 98. So let's talk about the Nook phone. This new mechanic can be used to call other islanders, look up DIY recipes, collect Nook miles, and take photos. There's also a little rumour you'll be able to customise your phone case after the September 2019 Nintendo Direct showcased different coloured phones, though whether these can be bought or crafted in the game is unclear. Number 99. You can also pole vault in this game. Look at that, pole vaulting in 2020. The future is now. Number 100. <laughs> New Horizons will also be able to feature up to seven other players with local or online. Or you can play single console with up to three other residents who can join the game through the Call Islander function on the Nook phone. Number 101.11. People luckily seem to be loving this new Animal Crossing game too. The Metacritic score is a whopping 91, with some even saying it's the best game they've played this year. I mean, it's not really that much competition, seeing as everything's been delayed, but still, good to know. Anyway, that was 101 facts about Animal Crossing. Which Animal Crossing game is your favourite? Do you have a favourite villager? Which villager is your best friend? You're my best friend, so let me know in the comments down below. That's tragic. Anyway. Also, why not give this video a like and subscribe to 101 facts if you haven't done so already? We would absolutely love your company. In the meantime though, two videos on screen right now, both of which are going to really flip your lid, but in a good way. So why not give one of them a click and I'll see you there. Stay well.